I sharpen my spindle gouge with a jig. You guys have seen me do it many, many times in my videos. I come over, I put my little one-way system on it, the very grind. I drop it in, I get my distance from the edge, come over, turn on my grinder, let it spool up, and then it's a matter of coming from one side to the other and back, take it off, and I'm pretty much done. If I've done that a few too many times, I might have, uh, my bevel might be a little bit low. I'll come over to a slightly rougher grind and I'll freehand just off the bevel. I'm not actually touching the edge. I'm just removing material. No big deal. It's that quick. And that's what I like about using the jig on my spindle gout, because it's one of the few tools that because of the shape of the flute, I can get the geometry I want with that jig. I don't have to do it freehand. Here's one thing I hate about pretty much every single spindle gouge on the market. Because what I've done right here is the most common way people are sharpening these tools nowadays. The one-way system is practically ubiquitous. The very grind or variations of it are all over the place. I've set this up probably 12 years ago and I don't think I've changed it since. So, what's my big problem? How far they put the flute on these tools? Here's the problem. I am now at end of life on this tool if I use that kind of sharpening system because I can no longer slide the sharpening gauge and register against some kind of flat. This pad right now needs to register against something so I can consistently come back in and do it. Once I get past here, I start coming up on this rounded section and that's, it's just not consistent. So you don't create a even grind on it. So what I need to actually do is extend that flat down, just like I've done on this tool right here. But this tool has now each, each reached its end of life, even with that modification, because I'm now hitting the ferrule on that one. But at least on this one, I can freehand grind, sharpen this one. It's less consistent than using the jig, uh, but I end up doing different grinds on these uh, for different applications, because in reality, metal is fairly cheap. But if the manufacturers of just about any brand would just extend the flute down another inch and a half, knowing so many people use this jig, a lot of people wouldn't have to do this. And granted, when these tools start out, they're quite a bit longer than they're, they're way out here. So I have gotten a lot of life out of this so far. So real quickly, I'm gonna show you how I grind that flat in order to main consi maintain consistency. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is pull the rubber band out of your hair and grab a pencil. Use the rubber band to attach a pencil to the flute of your uh, gouge. What this does is it exaggerates the angle right here because while it might be, it's, a, it's pretty easy to get a short, the gouge off by a degree or two, but the pencil will show you if you're off just even a little bit from horizontal. Next, you want to set your, uh, your platform so that it is pointing just a, a fraction below the center of whatever wheel you're doing. That way, this right here is pretty much 90 degrees to the center, you know, just a half a three-eighths of an inch up. Now, when I do this, I like to use a very coarse wheel, but if all you have is the one fine wheel you have on your other grinder, it'll work. It'll just take a little bit longer and your wheel, your uh, steel will get a little bit hotter. From here, what I'm going to do is just kind of eyeball what angle I need to keep my pencil at in order to engage the very center of this right here. Now mine is black, but if it is, yours isn't black, you can take a magic uh, marker to it and kind of highlight that right there. And to verify my angle, I'll just kind of rub it back and forth and look. And once my scratch marks at the v dead center, I know my angle is going to be right. And then it's just a matter of grinding it down a little bit at a time. And 
verifying often that you're getting in the center. I was a tad bit off right there, so I'll go a little bit higher with my pencil angle. See, and if I keep that point of the pencil at the same spot, I know I'm not changing the angle. Now, once you get that flat kind of centered the way you want, basically you can kind of re -gum, come up to it because you'll there's a feel to it. You it, if you're one higher or the other, it just doesn't feel right. You, you just kind of press into it, and it'll refine that flat and just grind a little bit more. Now you might notice that I'm I'm staying on the wheel quite a bit. That's because that's a steel. Uh, CBN wheel made out of steel. So this doesn't get that hot. See, I'm actually touching it for quite a while. Most of the heat is being absorbed into the wheel and that's kind of like a big, huge heat sink. So I'm just eyeballing it to make sure that my lines stay parallel so it looks like I'm kind of coming flat. And I just repeat this over and over and over. If you find yourself wandering, see if you notice right here, I purposely put a little bit too much pressure on the top so it's coming over on the side of the flute. Well, I can just register it and then put a little bit more pressure on bottom. Back at, back to being even, so now I just gotta keep it consistent. Notice now this, it's kind of tapering down so I can put a little bit more pressure on this side while I'm doing it to even it out. And I'll stop whenever it kind of gets so it's even right here. So that way I now have a consistent flat that will transition from the flat of the gouge, from the, from the flat of the gouge all the way up the handle. So I have now gained that much more life out of using this jig to sharpen this tool. Extra two inches might last me an extra few more weeks. Well, I have to buy more steel. A lot of y'all, if you're just weekend warriors, you know that might last you a few more years. So, hey, the key thing I'm working for is getting it flat and even with the current flutes so that my angle won't change as I transition off the groove and into the flat. And here's a message to all you tool makers out there, even my favorite ones. Uh, just extend that flute a few more inches and this will be okay. Uh, yes, you have to have a certain amount coming into the, uh, the handle in order for it to be strength. And a lot of y'all out there purposely mark somewhere on the, the steel how far into the uh, ferrule it needs to go. And that's how this, this my favorite tool company is. But this is the most common sharpening system out there. Design the tools for how we use them. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe you got a little few tips out of that one. And remember, it's always worth the effort to learn new techniques, create better tools, and share those ideas with others. Y'all be safe and have fun.